Gulf of Mexico bottom, still oily. I've seen what it looks like with my own eyes. It's not going to be fine. By 2012, scientist says, oil from the BP spill remains stuck on the bottom of the Gulf of Mexico. According to a top scientist, video and slides, but she says demonstrate the oil isn't degrading as hoped and has decimated life on parts of the seafloor. That report is at odds with a recent report by the BP spill compensation czar that said nearly all will be well by 2012. So, in other words, that's not really true. At a science conference in Washington Saturday, marine scientist Samantha Joy of the University of Georgia aired early results of her December submarine dives around the BP spill site. She went to places she had visited in the summer and expected the oil and residue from oil munching microbes would be gone by then. It wasn't. There's some sort of a bottleneck we have yet to identify for why this stuff doesn't seem to be degrading, Joy told the American Association for the Advancement of Science annual conference in Washington. Her research and those of her colleagues contrasts with other studies that show a more optimistic outlook about the health of the Gulf, saying microbes did great work munching the oil. So-called magic microbes consumed maybe 10% of the total discharge. The rest of it, we don't know, Joyce said, later adding, there's a lot of it out there. The head of the agency in charge of the health of the Gulf said Saturday that she thought that most of the oil is gone. And a Department of Energy scientist doing research with a grant from BP from before the spill said his examination of oil plumes in the water column show that microbes supposedly have done a fairly fast job of eating the oil. Lawrence Berkeley, National Lab scientist, Terry Hazen, said his research differs from Joy's because they looked at different places at different times. Joy's research was more widespread but has been slower in being published in scientific literature. In five different expeditions, the last one in December, Joy and colleagues took 250 cores of the seafloor and traveled across 2,600 square miles. Some of the locations she had been studying before the oil spill on April 20th and said there was a noticeable change. Much of the oil she found on the seafloor and in the water column was chemically fingerprinted, proving it comes from the BP oil spill. Joy is still waiting for results to show other oil samples she tested are from BP's Macondo well. She also showed pictures of oil choked bottom dwelling creatures. They included dead crabs and brittle stars, starfish like critters that are normally bright orange and tightly wrapped around coral. These brittle stars were pale, loose and dead. She also saw two worms so full of oil they suffocated. This is Macondo oil on the bottom, Joy said as she showed slides. This is dead organisms because of oil being deposited on their heads. Joy said her research shows that the burning of oil left soot on the seafloor, which still had petroleum products. And even more troublesome was the tremendous amount of methane from the BP well that mixed into the Gulf and was mostly ignored by other scientists and researchers. Joy and three colleagues last week published a study in Nature Geoscience that said the amount of gas injected into the Gulf was the equivalent of between 1.5 and 3 million barrels of oil. The gas is an important part of understanding what happened, said Ian McDonald of Florida State University. National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration Chief Jane Lipchenko told reporters Saturday that it's not a contradiction to say that although most of the oil is gone, there still remains oil out there. Earlier this month, Kenneth Feinberg, the government's oil compensation fund czar, said based on research he commissioned, he figured the Gulf of Mexico would almost fully recover by 2012, something Joy and the NOAA chief said isn't right. 
I've been to the bottom. I've seen what it looks like with my own eyes. It's not going to be fine by 2012, Joy told the Associated Press. You see what the bottom looks like. You have a different opinion. The NOAA chief said, even though the oil supposedly degraded relatively rapidly and is now mostly but not all gone, damage done to a variety of species may not become obvious for years to come. The chief on Saturday also announced the start of a Gulf restoration planning process to get the Gulf back to the condition. It was on April 19th, the day before the spill. That program would eventually be paid for by BP and other parties deemed responsible for the spill. This would be separate from an already begun restoration program that would improve all aspects of the Gulf, not just the oil spill, but has not been funded by the government yet, she said. The new program, which is part of the Natural Resources Damage Assessment Program, is part of the oil spill litigation, or out-of-court settlement, in which the polluters pay for overall damage to the ecosystem and efforts to return it to normal. This is different than paying compensation to people and businesses directly damaged by the spill. The process will begin with public meetings all over the region. And again, this too is another sign of the times. The BP oil spill was or is a physical manifestation of the Book of Revelation. These are more signs of the end times, transition days, which is about extraordinary changes happening all over the world. Everything that must change, must change quickly or rapidly, and for the better, because it's about what kind of world are we leaving to the future generations. Everything is connected, and everything is numbered. Again, Revelation chapter 8, verse 8. And the second angel sounded, and as it were, a great mountain burning with fire was cast into the sea, and the third part of the sea became as blood. 9. And the third part of the creatures which were in the sea and had life died, and the third part of the ships were destroyed. 10. And the third angel sounded, and there fell a great star from heaven, burning as it were a lamp, and it fell upon the third part of the rivers, and upon the fountains of waters. And Revelation chapter 16, verse 3. And the second angel poured out his vial upon the sea, and it became as the blood of a dead man, and every living soul died in the sea. 4. And the third angel poured out his vial upon the rivers and fountains of waters, and they became blood. 5. And I heard the angel of the waters say, Thou art righteous, O Lord, which art, and was, and shall be, because thou hast judged thus. 6. For they have shed the blood of saints and prophets, and thou hast given them blood to drink, for they are worthy. 7. And I heard another out of the altar say, Even so, Lord God Almighty, true and righteous are thy judgments. 8. And the fourth angel poured out his vial upon the sun, and power was given unto him to scorch humans with fire. And yes, again, it's time, time for all prophecy to be fulfilled. There are many different kinds of signs happening all around the world. The fourth angel comes quickly.